Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's hair tutorial, you're going to need a hair oil or a hair cream, a hairbrush, a comb, preferably a wide tooth comb, I just didn't have one, hair clips, and a really small curling iron. This is the Lee Stafford chopstick styler. Um, it's perfect for these kinds of curls, but you can also try to find just a normal round barrel um, that's very small. So I'm going to go in first. I'm just going to kind of brush through my hair. You want to try to have your hair as straight as possible. So if you're somebody who is naturally curly, um, maybe do your best to either blow dry it and kind of have it more straight or straighten it. Of course, you don't want to do, you know, a ton of excess damage to your hair. So try not to um, have to use like a straightener if you can. Uh, but if not, it will be pretty necessary to have it relatively straight. So I'm just going to go in with about one inch sections here. Um, I'm not going to do it any different than I would with a larger barrel. Um, you, I think some people think that with little curls like this, you have to take really, really tiny sections. And you can do that, absolutely. Um, I just, I don't, and I've seen other tutorials where people take, you know, relatively normal size sections. So um, as you can see, I, you know, start by putting my hair up and I work from the bottom up working in small layers. So this is a very, very small barrel, as you can see, and you probably can't tell in the video, but it's not round. It actually has like a rectangular shape, which kind of gives the curl um, a really sharp kind of kink to it. Um, so for me personally, uh, the hardest hair to do on my head with this uh, curling wand is the bottom layer of my hair because I have a lot of chemical cuts so little pieces stick out really easily and with tight curls like this you can't mask those quite as well as you can or quite as good as you can when you're doing a larger barrel curl so as you can see here I'm going back in and kind of like touching up a little bit of an end that popped out in one of the curls so now I'm just taking down another section um, you know I take I think this section was like right right in the middle of my ear so I'm not going to show you guys every single layer because it would take forever um, and it's not really necessary. It's just the same thing over and over again, really, until you get to the top. That's really the, you know, kind of time where it will get different depending on how you want to do your part and stuff. So that's all I am doing now is just going through the bottom and the middle layers that are just very repetitive. So now that I'm working on the section that's above my ear, um, and it, the parts, you know, of my hair that kind of frame my face, I am taking my curling wand and instead of having it at like a horizontal or having it, you know, lay horizontally, I'm kind of tipping it more vertically, not straight up, but kind of at the angle of my face and curling the hair in the direction away from my face. The rest of the curls that I am doing on my head that aren't framing my face, um, I'm just holding it horizontally and taking the curl back away from the front of my face, so twisting the hair away from the front of my face. And I do that all the way around um, on, you know, both sides. And in the when I get to the back, um, I kind of just s try to curl my hair in the direction that of whatever side of the back of my head I'm working on, and that seems to work okay. Oh, please excuse, by the way, the huge pile of clothes in the background. Um, I have an exposed closet, as you can see from the clothes on top of it, that are hanging, and the bottom one fell, and I've been too lazy and too frustrated by it to fix it. So please excuse that. And also excuse my crazy dye job. I really need to get it fixed and just haven't had time. So as you can see now, I'm starting to get more towards the upper part of my head, and this is probably where it is the most time-consuming because you have to be a little bit more careful with the curls because they're not going to be hidden by other curls. They're right, you know, right in plain sight. Um, so I choose or, you know, I try to take my part as far over as I can when I'm doing this hairstyle and have my hair like really flipped over because um, with these curls being so small, sometimes they can kind of make like your root part lay a little flat and then the hair just really goes out from there. And I kind of find that it's a little bit easier to mask that. Um, and to have that not happen quite as badly and quite as noticeably if I do like an extreme side part like this. So I'm working on the side now that isn't going to be flipped over um, and I'm just making sure that I hold the uh, curling wand like 
as close as I possibly can to my scalp to give it a good level of lift at my, at my uh, scalp so it looks like I have a lot of body. You want to try to do that because if you don't add body to the top, um, it can end up making it so that the bottom kind of poofs out a lot and it gives you a really odd triangular shape when it's all said and done and you kind of want to avoid that because it isn't complimentary, compliment, complimentary, I cannot speak really to anybody. So now I'm going to start working on this side of my hair, which is the hair part that flips over, um, that's like my side part. And I'm going to start by a kind of like separating that out um, and then I'm going to curl it. It's too, it was too much hair for me to just go in and, and curl it in sections. It would have ended up looking way too flat on my, on my head. So that's another thing. Um, again, like I was just saying about being really careful when you get to the top about not taking too much hair. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean in width, I mean making sure that you like really separate layers out so that you have a lot of body up there. The curls lay on top of each other and aren't just one big curl, if that makes sense. So I'm taking smaller sections in width and when it comes to the amount of hair I'm taking in each layer. So here, as you can see again, I'm curling away from the face. I actually didn't do that on the other side. I forgot to mention that because I didn't think that that would go well with the side part on that side. Like I kind of want that side to lay a little bit more flat and for the side that has the more hair, which is what we're working on now to have the most body and the most curls. So that layer is done, and now I'm working on the last top layer of what you are going to see on that side part. So this is what it looks like when everything is curled. Crazy. Yeah, you look like Shirley Temple. You do not want to leave it like this. I mean, if you like it, go for it. It's your, that's your thing, you know. But I'm not a fan. I, the whole point of this to me, of this hairstyle, is that you get to have, like, big, crazy 80s hair and, like, the most beautiful curly hair, even if you weren't born with it, which is, like, so cool to me because I have really straight hair. So um, I'm taking that hair oil now. It is um, part of the Alterna Caviar uh, line, and I, I think it's the anti-aging line, and it's just, I forget exactly what the name is. I'll link it below, but it's a hair oil, and I believe it's a new product. So I decided to pick it up, and I'm, like, blown away. It's by far my favorite Alterna um, product, and I use, like, all Alterna except for my dry shampoo, so that says a lot, and I don't think I could, like, live without this stuff now especially because I like to curl my hair like this and it just it does something like it transforms the curls so I put it on like right after I curl my hair and after I separate the curls like I just I, I pile this stuff on because for some reason it never makes my hair look greasy um it just makes it look like alive again and le way less frizzy and really glossy and really defines the curls so as you can see here I am just willy-nilly going in. I, I have started from the top before or the bottom, like from the most bottom layer or the top layer separating. I don't think it really matters. I think I prefer to start from the top and go down, um, but what I try to do is take each curl and separate it into three smaller curls, at least three. I find that doing this will give you a good amount of body. Um, so that is what I am doing now. I'm just kind of using my hands to kind of feel around. I really focus um, on what I'm feeling and like feeling my head and going all around. And if I feel any curl that's like still really tight and intact, I will start to pull it apart like you see here. When you're doing this, it's really, really, really easy to kind of like forget about the back. Um, so if you need to, the first couple times you try this out, like I did, I had to use a mirror to like check the back and I still do, even though I've done this a million times um, at this point. So yeah, definitely utilize a mirror and check out the back of your hair and make sure that everything's laying the right way. So, and as you can see now, it's like really starting to come together now that I'm working on the side with the, um, you know, with the, with the more hair from the side part. So you can see it really getting nice and big and fun and, and I love it. So I think, um, the longer, I think this hairstyle looks really, really cute if you have really long hair or if you have like shorter kind of bob style hair because then it will look you know it will get much shorter and look like really cute um but i i think that if you have 
longer hair that isn't like in a bob that the longer it is the better it looks so if you have extensions like you know feel free to play around with those and add those in it's only going to make it look you know much much better the more hair you add in and the longer it is so I didn't include all of the teasing and everything that I do just because I don't think that it's really necessary to show that. I think it's really specific to the way that you want to wear or style this hair. I hope that this was helpful for you guys too because I know that when I wanted to learn how to do this I was looking for tutorials and they were kind of few and far between so I definitely hope that this is helpful to you guys. Okay, so this is what you will be left with after you spend like three hours separating out your curls. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit the sub subscribe button if you aren't already for more videos like this. And thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.